And joining me now is Senator Gary Peters and Congressman Dan Kildee. It's good to see both of you. It's good to be with you. You know, and it's nice to have this event where everyone's all in one place yeah. and we can get to talk about a lot of things. And, and yeah. we have a, a lot on my agenda that I want to talk to. But first of all, I want to ask both of you, what are the things that people come up and ask you most about in the 24 hours that you've been here on the island? I'm going to start with you, Senator Peters. Well, it's a, it's a broad range of issues. That's right. a, the one great thing about up here is that you've got people from all different industries, uh, local government, uh, state government. So everybody's got a whole host of issues and you can deal with all those in one place. Right. The thing that I find just so so uh, important about being here is as I walk uh, through the uh, hotel, uh, I can talk to folks that if I had to track them down by phone, it would take me weeks to be able to actually have a conversation with them. Right. And we can start uh, working on their particular issues. So it's really a broad range of things. What about you, Congressman? Well, first of all, I agree. This is a really efficient way to see a lot of people and. You know, the senator represents the entire state. We have our districts, but in a lot of ways, as members of Congress, we collectively feel like we have an obligation to represent the whole state. So it's good to see people from other parts of the state and hear from them. You know, what I hear for the most part is uh, our questions about what we can get done in Washington. You know, there's a, it's a contentious environment right now. We have some pretty significant issues that we're facing as a country. I think people are less interested in sort of the day-to-day -day drama and really want to know what we can do to move the ball forward on infrastructure, on protecting the Great Lakes, on growing wages. Those are the things that folks ask about. Yeah, and I want to talk a little bit about the contentious nature that I believe people think exists in Washington right now. But first, I do want to start off with some of those issues that people are talking about. And something that you are both working on is PFAS and the contamination in Michigan. And just um, just this spring, the Environmental Working Group found Michigan has the most PFAS contamination sites in the country at right. 192. Now, is that number a little misleading because Michigan has been aggressive at trying to track down where some of these sites are? And, and, and on the national level, what can we do to try to start seeing where is the contamination coming from and what kind of cleanup can we do? Well, to your first question, I think uh, it, you're right. We had more sites. There's 700 sites around the country. We're about 200 of them, which is a large percentage. But I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we've been testing uh, more areas. If you look at PFAS, this is going to be a, a national issue. It's going to impact every state, and we have to have a national response to it. And more of my colleagues in the Senate are realizing that these are sites in their communities that are impacting their residents and are stepping up uh, to, to deal with it. Uh, there are a number of things we have to do nationally. One, we've got to get the EPA to actually come up with an enforceable standard uh, for cleanup. Uh, both Dan and I have been working on legislation to do that. There's an advisory now of 70 parts per trillion, which uh, they say anything over that is really harmful, uh, but it's not a firm standard. And as we move to clean up sites, which we must, you got to know what you're cleaning up to. And the EPA needs to, needs to step up their game. And we've been pushing that aggressively to make sure that we can get that standard, start the cleanup, but at the same time we're cleaning up, we also have to prevent more PFAS from getting into the environment. Mm -hmm. This is a big issue. This is one of those issues that we're really at the front end of. Uh, these are called forever chemicals mm -hmm. for a reason. They don't degrade on their own. They last a long time and they're really dangerous to human health. So as the Senator said, we, we've got to attack this on a number of fronts. First, you know, limit the amount of new harm by limiting the amount of PFAS that goes into the environment now. For example, by finding an alternative to firefighting foam that contains PFAS. That's where a lot of the PFAS contamination comes from in groundwater. We have to deal with the human health aspects of this. Um, we've worked to get additional data derived through the CDC for the impact that PFAS has on human health. It's a big problem. It's going to require a lot of work. I think we need to start, first of all, by setting a good example where the federal government has responsibility for example, at military sites where it was the federal government that was using PFAS, we have to set a good example by cleaning up the mess that we created. And then the bigger question is how do we deal with industry? I was going to say, what about the corporate accountability here and, and having them say, okay, we've been putting this in the water system since the 70s. We had no idea, but now we need to be responsible for that kind of cleanup. We do, and that's why we're also working on legislation to get PFAS as a, a classified as a hazardous chemical and then put into Superfund uh, laws. So on a Superfund site, Right now, you hold the polluter accountable, which are going to be private industry. And we have it on the western side of the state. We have a tannery that has contaminated a large area around the Grand Rapids uh, area, for example. Uh, we've got to make sure those private industry be, uh, folks uh, step up and, and start the cleanup. Uh, and the, because this is, uh, although we talk about the military aspect of it and what's happening on air bases, it's probably six or seven percent of the problem. Right. That means, you know, well over 90 percent is private industry. And it's also the manufacturers of this PFAS. To what extent did they know the harmful impacts of it and how did they mitigate it? And if they didn't, they're certainly going to be 
be held accountable. All right, so this is obviously an issue, a bipartisan issue the Michigan congressional right. delegation has been working on and working together. Um, so we say, ah, look, we can get things done when we have common goals. But I want to ask you, Congressman Kildee, about civility and what that means to you. And, and do you think that we can ever find it in Washington? You know, it's there. We have relationships that go across the aisle and really across the ideological spectrum. It doesn't get the same attention. Um, but I think both parties, both basically everyone in the political debate, uh, political dialogue, have a responsibility to bring a civil tone. That doesn't mean we have to agree. In fact, it allows us to disagree more effectively when we can be civil with one another. But it's kind of hard to ignore uh, the fact that the, that the president plays an important role in this. He has taken us to a different place. Uh, we've had a lot of difficulty with civil dialogue, but the president has taken us to a place that we haven't been to. And uh, I think people need to hold him accountable. And I'd feel better if it wasn't just Democrats that were calling him out on this, but more of my Republican colleagues doing the same. Well, Justin Amash has done that, and um, he said that there should be impeachment process started. What is your reaction to that? And I'm not sure we're there yet, but we can't take it off the table. I think we need to get uh, Mr. Mueller, for example, in front of the committees of the House and the Senate. We have to interview some of the key players in this. But the idea that we would take it off the table, I think, gives the president something that maybe um, violates the Constitution. We swore an oath to uphold the Constitution. I don't think we're there yet, but he may take us to a place where it's the only choice we have. I hope that's not the case. Senator Peters. Well, I agree. Uh, is that uh, if, if you look at the Mueller report, that raised certainly a lots of questions, and I think uh, it certainly was misrepresented by some of the folks who tried to characterize what's in that report. So we need to get the facts. You need to investigate. It's a fundamental role of Congress uh, to be that check and balance that our founders uh, put together in the in the Constitution. So you're doing your job if you're investigating. Uh, you need uh, to do that. But I also want to say we can't just focus just on investigations. We also have to focus on doing good work for the American people. And that's why I'm focused on dealing with the PFAS issue that we've talked about. We're talking about uh, career education for individuals. How do we make sure everybody has access to quality health care? I mean, just go down the list of what we need to be doing as a country. Uh, certainly, we can do uh, two things. The House can be doing the investigations, as they should. And certainly, the Constitution demands that they do that. But at the same time, we've got to be leaning in very uh, heavily in addressing the problems that we face as a country. Sometimes timing is everything. I wish I were speaking to you at 1130 this morning because at 11 this morning, uh, Robert Mueller is going to be making a statement. So um, we will uh, have to catch up with your reaction to that in the, in the parlor. And um, so let the civility continue, I think, uh, hopefully along the line here. All right. Thanks so much, gentlemen, Thank for joining Great me. To be it's with good you.